Okay, and go ahead and start the recording. Thank you, Kristen. You sorry, read my mind. Sorry. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can show my screen. This is always so difficult for me, you guys, because I do not use this enough. Okay. Uh, so I think we want this one. Okay. Is are you seeing the Zoom? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so for the purpose of the, the, the recording today, what we want to talk about is copying or linking application forms to grant forms and then linking grant forms down to a sub document. So in the old version, it was all about we use the word copying, we would copy down. We use now linking because linking allows us to basically say, we're linking this form to this other particular form and a, a sub-document of and whatever that might be. So um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start at a funding opportunity that, that I already have. Let me move my little thing here. Um, and we'll use research. So let's go look at one that's possibly has the name, you know, okay. So up here, I'm gonna start up here at the funding opportunity. So in the application process, regardless of what forms you got, you can always go over to the side and you can see if that form is set to copy to the grant. If it's not set to copy, that's an indication that you have not linked those forms. So I'm going to go down now into, um, it's, a, it's a quick way for me to get to the form creator. So if I back up, you can see that I'm in applications in the form creator under my program area, research and development. I can also come over here and I can identify which forms are already linked or set to copy when I click on my column, copy to grant. So you can see that these have been set to link or copy. So if I go look at one, the big difference is, is I should have a go to grant where I won't have that if I don't have it linked. And also if I click on my edit form properties, I can see that's already linked. And if I need to add a field, I can do so. And I think you guys saw that last week where we can resync our forms. It does not, um, it does not update your, um, your instructions. Um, I sent something I think to Deb, so Deb can share that with all of you if she has it. But basically when you're resyncing forms, if you add, another field to the application, you would want to come in here to the form properties and resync it with a grant form. And I think we kind of somewhat went over this last time, but I wanna make sure that everybody understands the whole copy function or link function before I go any further. No questions, nothing in the chat. Looks like nobody has a question. Perfect. So if I want to actually take this one and I want to copy it down, I can take it, I can click on that form and then I'm going to go to the edit form properties. And then I'm going to say, I wanna link it with the grant. So I click on this link with grant and then you just click create link form. When you do that, it's gonna pop you out and take you back. But now you see that it has a copy to grant check mark. It's not in use anywhere, but you have the check mark. 
when I go into that form now, I do have a go to grant. So this is not the copy form. A copy form, I don't want you to be confused, means that I'm just copying this form because I want another application form that I may want to utilize in another program area or even in the same program area. But I'm, I'm basically creating a duplicate of this form. So do not be confused, be confused by the copy form. We're working with the actual link or it's linking the form down into another document. And I say down because it starts at the application and you have the capability to map or link it down to the grant and then down from the grant into the sub documents of the grant. So if I go to the grant form, now I'm in the actual grant form. And if I want to copy this down to the status report, I can. And I would just simply link with the sub document and I select it. So if I select that I want to link it down to the status report, I click the status report. And then again, I'm clicking that create linked form. When I click on that create linked form, it takes me out. I am now at the grant level and I can go down and I can look at that form. I can go to the status report if I want it. And I, I think I want to go to the status report. And then it was an application information form right here, as you can see, is now in the status report. If I click on that and I edit those form properties, as you can see now, I am in the status report and I can't link it down any further. Okay, there is no linking across. So understand that when you link from the grant, you're going to have options of linking to the sub documents of the grant. Mm -hmm. But we've had a lot of people ask, well, why can't we link a grant form to a status report form? The system does not do that, it doesn't support that option. Your only option, again, is the grant to the sub documents, but sub documents do not talk to each other in the system. So if I want to, what I would do is I would have to come back to the actual grant form. So let me back up into the grant form. I wonder if I can click this if that'll get there. Okay, I gotta find my application information. It tells me that it's at the status report. So I'm gonna click here and then I can either go to the status report from here or I can click my edit form properties. And now I can actually link to a different document and I can link to the claim, the site visit a contract amendment. So if I wanted to link to an amendment, then I would create that link. And then what I'd like to show you is how it actually shows status report and amendment. So if I cl click back in here, I can now go to that status report or I can go to that amendment, amendment from the grant. Okay, we're gonna stop right here. Let's talk about some questions. So what questions did everybody have? Tina, I have one, but it, it may not be relevant, but I'm gonna ask it. So, so um, I am going to share that information that you gave us um, about the in instructions and updating instructions. But in, in some of those um, emails that you've been sending, you guys have been talking about the parent-child relationship. Does that mm -hmm. come into play here? So are like the sub documents yes. children? Yes. Yeah. So let's, let's okay. run through this because that is something that I do want to point out to you guys that the new system does that you did not have in the old system and Deb is correct. So we're gonna start back. I'm actually gonna uh, back out of here. I'm gonna go back to that application where I actually started. So I started this at the application. So because I did, when I click on this form and I have linked it, as soon as I link it to the grant, it now becomes the parent. So this linked is the parent form, okay? 
if I go to the grant, I now have a parent-child relationship. It would have said child only had I not linked it any further. So then the application would have been the parent and the grant form would have been the child of the parent. But because I linked this, this now is a parent of the status report and amendment. So if I go in and click on the amendment form, it is only a child, it will stay a child, you can't link it any further. So if I come back and I go to a grant form that I haven't copied from an application, it would be like, so let's see, I wanna make this blank and we have never done the budget detail worksheet, okay? This, if I would link this budget form to a sub document, so say I am linking it to the amendments and I create that link and I go back to that budget form. Ah. Uh, Maybe I should have done one that was better. I linked it to the, okay, so it's this one. Okay, so when we look, at, we're in the grant, we're staying in the grant for a minute. When we look at this, this is the parent. It is, it is not a child because I didn't link it from the application to the grant. So this is the parent for the contract amendment. So if I go to that amendment, that's the child. If I linked it to everything and anything from the grant down to say the, the contract amendment, the status report, the, the claim if it wasn't a budget and the um, site visit, all of those would be children of the main form at the grant level. So let's talk about that. So does anybody have any questions about how it, it creates that relationship so it knows what the actual child relationship is if it's linked? You know, I, this is Dennis. I, I'm, I'm glad you're recording this because um, a lot of this is new to me and uh, I'm gonna need to, to go back and look at this again. But if, if I'm playing around um, creating um, child parent relationships. And I realized I didn't want to actually have that relationship. Can I, how do I take it away? You can't, I, you, you can't. can't, you have told the system that this is always a child of that. Um, you don't have to use it, Dennis, but you cannot take it away. The system knows, therefore it would never be confused if you tried to do it again and added more fields, then you would just reseek. If I copy a form that has a child parent relationship, um, does that relationship copy with it? No, no. And that is a very good question. So if we go back to the application and I want to look at something that I have copied and, and it's down in that grant already, if I click on this application information and I copy the form, and it, it, regardless of where it copies, but I'm gonna keep it in research so I'm not junking up everyone else's system or area. And I click save, it creates that copy, but it is not linked to anything. Do you see that? So if I go in here, it is a link, it shows as a link parent. Let me see this. This this should not copy anywhere. So it knows it was a parent and I can link it with the grant, but it does start as a parent. So that's a little bit different than a regular form that you just start out. But it it knows it's not linked. So I'd have to create that link. So it knows it's a parent, but it doesn't know a parent of what? Right. 
it, it's just apparent. It, it, it's just apparent. So like if I go look at the pre-application information, see how there's nothing linked, but the copy knew it was apparent, but it you still haven't set up any relationship. It's it, it's just simply letting you know that it was apparent that you copied. Where this form here started out, it's never been copied. It's never been linked. Is okay, this helpful to people? Yeah, what, what are some of the questions? So, you know, you guys wanted me to show this to you. So what are some of your questions that you were having? Or did we did we cover everything? Does it is it making sense? I think Jeannie, you you had some copying issues. Don had some um, questions about copying. The Anybody? issues are different from how it w should work. That's all conversion stuff. So they, we've had problems from day one. So I want to just throw that out there. If you create it on the system, this is the, how it's managed. You cannot go by what has happened in the conversion. So the way the old system and the new system function as far as the copying isn't even apples to apples. The old system. And the reason why you guys had so many problems with it looking like it was the same form and it would attach to an already copied grant form. And that's happened, I think, across the board for everybody in this meeting is because it went and looked for this section reference. And it was a like um, I'm looking for uh, basically the same name with the same fields. So the same section name, same fields. This is totally different. This is actually mapping by PKs, mapping fields completely different. That was a whole yes system over there. This is totally different. So that's why you have that and why it shows linked. And that's why we created the parent child relationship. You did not have that in the old system. The old system, in fact, was kind of guessing. So that's why there's so many issues. That's why there's so many issues with you guys when it was supposed to copy and you are now awarding something that we converted that half the sections aren't even showing up. So, but don't compare the two. There, there is no, there isn't anything relative that happened or occurred in the conversion of what should and what the system is currently doing now. Okay, more questions on this? Anything else on this? Tina, if we do have questions about some of those conversion issues, um, what's the best way to ask those? Should we just send those into support? Well, I know we have an emergency one that I sent in on uh, Friday for grants to counties where the um, voucher isn't converted or the voucher information isn't coming over. I just wasn't sure if we should like ask those at the end or send them into support or both or, or what. Those right now are all with developers. So un okay. unless it's a brand new one that you have not, um, you know, actually found, and but you just say you stumble upon it today, and you're like, oh my gosh, this this is not, you know, copying down. Um, then then yes, yeah, send it into support. Those are all developers um, working on those, and everything to date that's been sent in is with the developers. Okay. It isn't anything that that like I can fix for you guys or you guys can correct yourself. This is all developers uh, working with Audif and Tom um, 
to get those connected, uh, um, you know, appropriately. It's definitely a developer um, conversion item. Even yours is on that situation. And we have actually even pulled Tom in for that. Um, we know how important it is. So Tom, Tom is very aware and Audif are very aware of what is what are critical and what they're trying to get done and complete for you guys. Okay, thanks, Tina. You're welcome. And so, Tina, you're just saying that if it's something that um, was before, it needs to go into you as a support. But if it's something you're building or something that you're doing new or you're doing a new funding opportunity, this is how it works now. Right, exactly. Okay. So I don't, right. you know, I don't want to confuse you guys and and we're not comparing the two actions at all because it is totally different. Okay. Uh, okay, so is everybody good with that then? Do you think everybody do we understand how that link or that relationship is created? And and de again, I want to reiterate Dennis's question also. Once it's linked, it doesn't hurt anything, you guys. Uh, but you can't you can't unlink forms. It, it automatically has built that relationship in in the form creator. However, and I think I showed you last week it, when you guys go in here and you would add fields you must resynchronize. So if I'm counting down in this form and I am adding a new field, when I add my new field, and we will just leave it at that. When I've added my new field, oh shoot, I haven't linked it. So let's go in and I wanna link it. Okay, now I'm going to go back. So add new field. We'll see, second new field added. Okay, I'm on the application. When I go to the grant form, I don't have my second field, okay? Because I linked it previously. So now if I go back and look at that application again, and I believe it was this one, and I have my second new field and I wanna add it. So then you wanna come back to the form properties and resynchronize with the grant. So when you resynchronize, then you can actually go into that. I can go to the grant this way and I can see my new field was added. So in Dennis's case, you can't actually ever unlink, but you wouldn't have the option to link. It's already linked. So when you come up here in your application form and you see am i in the right one and i edit those properties oh i want to be in the application so when you come up here to try and link if you don't notice that it is already linked when you when you look at this it already says resynchronize with grant it knows. So all you have to do then is just click it again. And if I go to the grant, even though I clicked it again, I'm still only getting the one new field. Okay. It's not in use. I could delete it if I wanted to. There are specific rules around budgets. So budgets, you can't delete the fields. 
Um, if it's linked and you are using it at the funding opportunity. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna start at the application and I'm going to, this one set to copy and it's a general form. And when I look at this and I click on my form properties, I could delete this. I could delete this application form. Okay. And this is the applicant new delete. And the applicant new is gone. Okay. If I have it in use and it's copied, I can't. It's not going to let me. It's in use. It's preserving your data. So in the old system, people would delete items or fields and it would cause a mess because it was in use and they were deleting data. So you can't. If that's linked and you have used it and you click on your form properties, you're not going to have a delete button. Budgets, especially when you get into budgets, this one is a budget. I, whoops. I can't delete it. You're not going to be able to delete budget. Um, or standard forms if they're linked. So in a rare case where it's not being used, you can. You'll find that throughout the entire system. It's preserving the data so you cannot delete it in error. It knows it's linked, it knows it's being used. And that is the logic behind there. And we'll get, we can get more into that with the form creator training too. Um, any other questions on anything like that or anything you guys have ran across? Again, you know, not necessarily errors, but just questions on. Thanks for going over this, Tina. No problem. No problem. I think it's helpful for all of you guys. And I love the fact that I can sit here and I, again, remember, this is so helpful. Like wh where it's, you know, what your global forms are doing versus, you know, what forms do I have that are set to copy or copy further down when you get down into the grant. Um, activities. And inventory, we will, so HUD activities, I believe, um, was completed. I don't know if Dawn is on the call. This is for HUD activities. I suppose you could use it for something else, but it's truly meant for HUD activities. And this is inventory. We will be turning on inventory probably today at the latest tomorrow for Dawn for his inventory. We're working on that now. So just be aware. Um, the, the one thing that I want you to notice is, is that you may, may not see it on your, um, your, depending on if you're privileged to the inventory or not. Um, but I would like to have just a small meeting. Maybe um, we can even record it, even if you guys can't attend. And I can give it to Deb because I want you guys to be aware that inventory is on there and external users can add inventory. Um, Dawn's ex same way in the old system, but I, I just, you guys haven't seen it on the new, but we are working on it for Dawn and getting that stuff set up. So that will be there in the next couple of days, just an FYI out there. Okay. I, I would, I think that would be helpful for you to record. Yeah, um, I think so, so if you too. could, that would be great. Don was on here. I don't see him now. I'm still here. 
Oh, there you are. Hey. Just hiding in the background. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, you guys were talking about um, a status report. So, so tell me what you are wanting to do with a status report or um, a, a grant form to a status report. What oh, just a second, yeah. Tina. We, we did have a question. Someone asked if you could ju give just a 30 second overview of the inventory, like the purpose or, or why it would be used, just like a quick overview. Um, Not inventory, like, inventory yeah. is used. Well, I can tell you right now, Don can, can probably convey that in a better way for his use. Don, why don't you tell him what you're using it for? Sure. So one of our, well, a couple of our disaster programs have so many properties that they're they're rehabilitating that we needed a way to keep track of all of the properties and the people in those properties, whether they're single family or multifamily units. So we use the inventory per property. And then the nice thing about the inventory is that there's a subsection. So you can have a one to many relationship. So like in a, a multifamily unit, you can have the one unit with the one address. <clears throat> And then you can have multiple families in it. And those multiple families, each, each family, we've got to keep track of the demographics of them. So things like whether it's a female head of household, ethnicity, race, uh, number of people in the household, their median income, stuff like that. And then what's really nice about the inventory is that when they go to, to make a claim, against that property. Before we started using the inventory, we had no way to tie the dollar amount to a specific property. But now with the inventory, we can identify the field and the claim as an inventory field. And so it'll pull from the inventory list. So now we can link the claim directly to one item in the inventory. And that same function works against uh, status reports too. So then we can directly link. We're not we're not trying to link on address anymore. We can link on a key value. Did that answer it, Tina? I think so, yeah. So okay. so that that's a specific use, but we have many clients that have used it for um, diesel engines, um, Department of Transportation. So think about, you know, like vehicles, like, um, you know, buses, um, things like that. Um, we have done it for, we have one client that I want to say she uses it for um, her people. So um, her the, the people, it, it's basically like uh, personnel and fringe benefits and the grants are nothing but those people and fringe benefits. And, and so she's basically inventorying those people. Uh, other cases would be if you are using it for operating. Um, many times it would be like your equipment, even clear down to, we have, um, a client that uses it for, uh, sirens that they buy throughout. It's actually Samoa. So they, they have sirens on the Island and they have to inventory those. So that's all grant funded. And then they simply just inventory the location of every one of those sirens how many they have, what they've paid for it, and so on and so forth. So many, many uses as far as inventory. Another one is art. So um, we have a client that they do more, it's more arts council. And so it's photographs. It's um, whether it's a photograph or whether it's um, a, a picture they painted or whatever the case may be. You can get really creative if you want to. The, the new system, we have expanded on inventory tremendously from the old. So it's probably a good idea that we actually walk through this and maybe just schedule, like if anybody wants to attend and we won't do it on the Tuesday, we'll do it on a different day. Um, and we can just go, anybody that wants to show up, let's go over the inventory. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea even even just to get Don more familiar with the new system. Yeah, I think that's a good and idea. And maybe, going. yeah, maybe set it up with Don to make sure he can go and then just open it up to anybody else who might be interested in 
looking at it and maybe thinking about it um, before then with your right. agencies to think if there's anything you all could use it for. But yeah, so good. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for doing and that. Not a problem, because I think that's going to be a big one, too. And I think, you know, you guys share it on the system, but at the same time, it's set up by the funding opportunities too. So it, it's it's like a global thing, but not really global, if that makes sense. So we, we need to get more into that. So you guys are aware of what you will see versus what you will actually do if you manage inventory. Okay, um, what other things? What's on our list now, Deb? Let me see if I can find it again. I know there. Okay. Uh, the scheduler, you, the bulk document creator, would be the next one up. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, before we actually even go to the scheduler, what I always say is you've got to start at the grant level. So, the, and I've got to make sure I've got a funding opportunity where I have some grants. So we're gonna just see what I have out there. No, let's do it by, this one looks good, 22451. 22451. Okay, so I'm gonna use funding opportunity 22451. And I'm actually going to start there and I'll tell you why. When you actually use the scheduler, it is the best recommendation I can give. If at all possible, you need to start with your start and end dates at the funding opportunity. Because if you enter them in the general information, when you actually award in the grant tracking, I have to update these anyway. So we're going to say start date of 2023. And then this one at? I'll go up to 25. Okay. Current dates are important. The, the, the system is going to work off of your project start and end dates at the grant level. But if you start here, if you can at all possible at the funding opportunity, then what happens is when you get down into awarding your applications into grant tracking, that will come across. And that way you you don't have to make sure that you have to enter a start date and an end date. And you can update those, you can change those, you can do whatever you need to do. But the fact is, is that it, it starts here, if at all possible, if you can. I'm actually going to uh, change the, the, this to just so we can use this in the future and I know which one I'm using. And this is 22451. Okay, now when I go down into the grant tracking, I have to make sure that all of those grants, again, have project start and end dates. So I have start dates, I have end dates. Now I'm gonna update two out of this because I don't wanna go through something. So we're gonna put again those dates. I'm just going to back up here. Oh. And we're going to back. Okay. I should be adequate. 
So if you're privileged to it, um, you will see utilities and then you will see a bulk document creator. So when I click on this, it's asking for the script. So this is the script. This is not going to run yet. We have to add our scripts first and foremost to tell the system what we actually wanna do and how we wanna do it. So I'm going to click add a new script. And as you can see, I have quite a few, there's, there's required fields, but the one thing that I wanna tell you is that when you create your scripts, let me get my program area in here. It's going to default for the status report only, okay? We don't do the document creator for the claims. We don't do it for the contract amendments. We don't do it for site visits. We do it for status reports. It's going to run off your type. And your subtype is really important because again, the funding opportunity, that 22451, so I, now I've got to go back and actually look what I have for that. So I've got to log back in, you guys, because this is important as well. When I log in and go back to my funding opportunity, 22451. I have to look at my status report types. If you don't, then you're gonna be running it on the incorrect type more than likely. So when I go in here and I go over to status report types, I have to make sure that I'm running it on the report type that I've set for, that I'm gonna utilize for that funding opportunity or no, no forms will show up, okay? So, I know I have to run it on a quarterly. You guys have quite a few quarterlies. I want to create the status in the editing if I want to have my grantees complete this form. I could do it and submit it or approved, but only those options are there simply for historical data. If you are actually wanting them to submit it in and you want them to have reminders, you want to make sure you put it in editing status. Your reference date is going to be based on that start date of the grant or the end date. So in cases of start date, you could say, well, you know, I want to use the start date. Um, uh, for my quarterlies based on the start date, you know, because my end dates clear out into the future, right? So a lot of the times you're going to use start date, I would say the majority of the time. But we, a lot of times we'll use the end date for a final. So you, maybe you've got a final out there and you want that to be completed 90 days after the end date. That is a possibility if you set this up for end date. I want to set mine up based on my start date. And I'm going to say that I want to start it on a specific date. Okay. Or days from reference date truly means 90 days from start date or 90 days from end date or 30 days or whatever, how many ever days. Okay. If I say start on a specific date, that's going to be my due date. I want it to be due on a specific date. So the specific date I have to enter in here. So let's say for this one, it's a quarterly, it's 221. I'm gonna run it and I wanna say my specific date would be 03-31-2022. Uh, if I'm saying my calendar year and this is my first quarter, okay? One time. The reason why I just put it to a specific date. And honestly, we recommend everyone use one time for a specific date because you would want to create another script for second quarter. 
another script for third quarter, another script for fourth quarter, because I gave it a specific date. I'm also going to put in my period. So I'm going to say, well, you know what? I'm going to change this. I'm going to give them plenty of time to fill this out. So I'm going to change this to 04-15-2023 because I want to make my start of the period a 101-2023 and I want it to end on 03-31. And what I just told the system is I want you to create status reports that are our quarterly type and editing that I want the due date to be 415 and one time for every grant that is in awarded or is underway status. And this is my period, my reporting period on that status report. Okay. So Tina, this is Kristen. Is there a, is the start date? Is that the start date for the individual grant or for the overall funding opportunity? It would look at the grant. So you okay. could literally, you know, you could have different start dates in there, but it's going to work off of the start date, especially when you get into the days. Like if you want to do 90 days, it's going to look at every grant and go, oh, well, they're all different. And so 90 days, it would be different for every grant. And this situation, I'm specifying that that due date, regardless of the start date, it's going to be a due date of 415. You kind of have to know your grants, you guys, <coughs> or, it's, or it doesn't make any sense. Um, it, it, you know, it's when for that type of project or whatever grant you have, grants you have out there for that funding opportunity, basically that's why you have an option of, you know, the specific day or, or actually, you know, how many days out from the start or end date. Again, I would still recommend one time because you're specifying the, the date range. And I don't know anybody that doesn't need a date range on, you know, on their status reports. You're looking for, a, you know, whatever they're submitting in is based on a specific period of time, whether it's quarterly, annual, whatever the case may be, or final. Um, any other questions? That was a really good question. So any other questions like that, that you see here, uh, a different case scenario that we can run? Tina, uh, one of the things I like about this is, is that once you set it up for the first quarter, um, using the bulk document creator for the second quarter is really easy because all you have to do is change the dates. Are you able to show that? Do you have one that you yeah. can show? Yeah, we can. So I just saved my script, okay? I haven't ran anything. So I think sometimes people are thinking that, okay, I've created that and when I save, it's gonna run it. No, you are creating a script. So like Dennis said, I could come in here and I could create second quarter and I will show that. I wanna actually show you how it runs so you can see how it runs and how it documents because a lot of times you have more than one, uh, you know, manager basically looking at those grants. So let's go ahead and run this script. So if I click on the blue button, run script, it's going to ask me, okay, now which funding opportunity under research and development do you want to use? And I don't see mine. Does anybody know why? because the system is automatically looking for closed or open funding opportunities. It's not gonna do it for anything that is as in test and mine was. It's not gonna do it for any that are and archived because archived is way past when you would want a status report. And if you want a status report, then you need to keep your funding opportunity closed and don't archive it yet till all of those are in and the finals are in and you can archive that funding opportunity. Okay, does, it, does everybody see that? 
So I have to go back to my funding opportunity and I have to make sure that it's in closed status. Okay, so now let me back up, click run script again. And as you can see, it is 22451 right there. It already knows that it hasn't been ran or I would have this documented. And you probably will not see this until you run your first one. I have to click execute script. And this is where I still want everybody to be mindful. Depending on how many status reports you have out there, this thing is generating, actually creating the status report general information documents based on how many grants you have out there in that funding opportunity. And even, I mean, it's going through this process. So don't click execute script, actually look and see if it's spinning up here. And we're gonna let it spin. And I'm sure it's a lot slower just cause I'm on a meeting too. Okay, come on. I've done this before. It's just not that slow. Well, is anybody running reports or anybody doing anything? I'll jump in. It's not me, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, I was running a uh, this is crazy. data only report, uh, but I can't imagine I, that that would break the system. It does. Well, it's not that it breaks the system, but any query, any query. So if somebody's going in there doing a really large query, it, it affects me too, or it affects everyone because right. it, you know, a, a grant tracking search is a query. This is a query behind the scenes. So, so, so I, I think I I'm the one that broke it, Tina, but here's the thing. I, we have to be able to run reports. I'm running a data only. So this is a report that you built, not you, but Dulles built. And, and I did a, I did a filter on underway grants and that seems to every time I do that, it seems to tie up the system. And that's that has to we have to yeah. be able to run reports. That's that's why I wanted um, Tom on the meeting is because I wanted to see if we because they've been doing quite a bit of research and discussions with a developer, and I wanted to see if he was avail available for this meeting, but he obviously uh, couldn't make it. So. Um, because I didn't hear back and um, I asked him last night if he could join. I, so I, I closed my session of the grant system. I don't know if that stops the query, but it doesn't. So that's the other thing you guys need to know. If you run a query and you run it, say on all, all, all just because you close out, it, it's not stopping the query. So we'll let it run here. I can't imagine it taking much longer, correct? Well, I mean, I only have 200 open grants. I can't, I don't understand why it's, it, well, maybe, maybe I'm not the one that did it, but it, it seemed like timing wise, it, it seemed like that's when it started just spinning. Um, it, when I ran this before, this is actually pretty fast. Who, who on the call has ran this already? The scheduler you're talking about? Yeah. I have. How long did it take you oh, for a funding opportunity? 60 seconds or less. Yeah, because see, that's that's what it typically is for me. Um, I just ran, I just uh, was doing this for someone else. Education, I think. Um, and it was quick. It was fast. 
And I just tried to log in and it's not letting me. It's just spinning. Hey, Tina, can I ask a quick question sure. on, this, on this on this issue specifically? Because as much as I know and as much as I know how to run queries, there is, and it's happened one time, where I accidentally run that query and didn't mean to run it, knowing that there was a problem with it. And like, as soon as I see this, I know that I can't stop it. Is there somebody we can call like immediately and say, hey, the, I, this is going to take it down? Or can you stop it? It's a developer thing. They go in, I guess, and they look at the, the large queries okay. that are going on. Well, I was just thinking like even in Dennis's case, if he knew that it was like going to cause right. problems, if he could just say, hey, you know, I did it. Can we stop it or do whatever? I wonder, you know, you're on to something, Don. I wonder if there's something that we can put like in the system that would say stop this query. Right. Let me, let yeah. me check on that. That's a good idea. And I know because, I'm still because together. I know I've even done it. And regardless of where it is, but then I like this last time the system was down 20 minutes and I knew it was going to go down within the first 0 0.02 seconds. And if I could have gotten the right people, like there, nobody would have noticed that it was even slow. Right. You would have eliminated it. I think we've all done it. Don, I've even done it on it's, your system. It didn't bring anybody down, but I'm like, oh, gee, many. Well, it, and it's do? easy to yeah. do. It is easy to do. So anyway, I didn't know if that was something that was possible or like a hotline to somebody that can reset the session or I don't know, something. That's yeah, a good that's idea, because honestly, well, if I, it doesn't if it doesn't populate results in 30 seconds or 60 seconds, I know it's not working. Yeah. For yeah. me, I yeah. mean, Don needs to give it more time for as much data as he has, but. Well, a lot of times not, but I can't tell if it's my internet connection that's slow or if it's actually the response time that's slow. So, right. You know, right. Anyway. Um, I'm going to go see now. Um, uh, let's go look at the grants. Um, I don't, I don't want to run it again. I'm, I want to look and see if we can't. Can you log in now, Deb? Are you able to log in? Because I'm still spinning. I'm still spinning. My I'm still spinning. Is. Yeah, I'm still spinning. Well, you guys, uh, somebody send something in to support, please. I can do that. Thank you. We'll see if. Uh... I just got the uh, status 500 error. The yeah. Error. So it's down. Yeah, it's still just spinning and it doesn't look like to me it took, it even ran the script. And I'm still spinning trying to get out of here. Um, let's hold this for another day. Um, that, that, we're not done with this, but I've got to get off this call and get you guys up and running. And I think we're out of time anyway, aren't we? Yeah. So, okay, so let me do, I, I'm going to go to another meeting, but I'm going to call Audif as soon as I get off of here, okay? And I'll, I'll get you guys back up and running. And we'll, we'll work on this again, and I'll send this for the inventory, okay? Okay. Thank you, Tina. This has Thanks, been Tom. helpful. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Everybody else, we're going to stay on for a little bit if you if you want to join us, we're, we just kind of talk through what Tina's talked through and uh, see if there's any other issues we need to think about. And that, Kristen, and Kristen, can you stop recording? If you yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll do that right now.